Hey everybody, hope you're well, and it's James here over the part-time entrepreneur. And today, we're going to have a look at the ICO review for SyncFab, which is manufacturing on the blockchain. And before we start, I just want to say that this is a sponsored video. Uh, however, I will always give my open, honest, and neutral view. So who are they? Well, they're a USA-formed company in 2013, and they're already working with 70-plus factories and partnerships. Now, the CEO, Jerry, he's just seen an opportunity where blockchain chain and technology can save a lot of money as we go through this overview you will see maybe some of the, the reasons for that as well so the big thing is that they're going to have something called the mfg token which is a utility token which they will use to reward uh, purchasers manufacturers and also make payments against uh, intellectual property as well and also it promotes trust and transparency so what are the problems? Well, the first one is, is that procurement firms control the access and obviously hooking up these, these companies with suppliers and all the rest of it. Now, that makes it quite difficult for like the smaller companies to source manufacturing and also the smaller companies to you know, advertise what their capacity and capability is to produce a bespoke part or whatever it is that they're making. There's also increased prices and no protection. Now, that doesn't sound like a benefit at all. So, you know, that's obviously a bit of a problem too. And the other thing is that, that we know that technology is able to create massive efficiencies. And now, at the moment, as it stands, there isn't. And that's estimated at about a 1.5 billion uh, cost to this particular industry. Now, what is the solution that these guys are trying to come up with? Well, the first thing is, is they want to create this decentralized buyer to manufacturer platform. And by that, it makes it a lot fairer. So, you know, we've seen this across many different platforms like INS, where, you know, at the moment you get the big brands and the big suppliers, but with their platform and how it all works on the decentralized network is that you can actually have local suppliers feed into that as well. Also got matching buyers based on requirements. So a little bit more specific. We've seen this a lot where people are inputting their details and it matches the right people together. So it also saves time in terms of searching for people or the right partners to, to help you, you know, manufacture a particular part or product. It's also eliminating the middleman because really this is what blockchain is all about. It's sort of eliminating uh, the middleman from pretty much every situation uh, because obviously the middleman is normally this trust party and obviously with blockchain, the blockchain is the, the trust element of the, the whole piece. And the other thing is they'll be able to use smart contracts, which we know that are incredibly safe because uh, obviously the cryptography behind it and the blockchain and also is going to save time. Now, I know before we move on that maybe talking about procurement isn't one of the sexiest topics. So this time for a little interlude. <music> procurement just became a whole lot more interesting. So what are the key benefits to buyers? Well, they're going to get cheaper, higher quality quotes. They'll have on-demand purchasing and tracking. So that may obviously, you know, with blockchain, it's very much more instant. They can connect to local networks. And also, they'll have secure transactions. And on the flip side, for the manufacturers, you know, they're able to eliminate like marketing costs, so not having to put themselves out there so much. There'll be a you know bit of a platform where they can go and do this, uh, and it'll be very cheap for them to do. You know, guaranteed payment via the smart contract. So again, another big uh, bonus there. And you know, they can control the the pricing as well. So. That's a big thing. So, you know, if you've got all this middleman and all these percentages going elsewhere, you know, your costs then fluctuate quite a lot, where if they know it's one standard price, you can control your costs a lot more. And actually they can become incredibly more focused instead of trying to balance the book so much, but actually focus on making, you know, great quality products. As always, we've got a graph, uh, but again, one of the big things is, you know, putting technology to work in supply chain is really having a, a big impact so you know over the next 12 to 24 months I, I see a lot of blockchain coming into sort of supply chain because it's a perfect fit in the sense of the date stamping it's tracking it's secure um, and it's also it's, it's there live for things like audits so most companies will need to be audited at some point so I don't you know if that's the, the financial books or if that's you know product so they want to see the product going out we've obviously seen the two sisters scams with the chicken where the chicken was sent to a retailer and then they didn't want it so they sent it back they then cut the packets open put the chicken 
back into another pack and then sent it off to another supermarket. So that chicken, by the time it got to the shelves, was way old and should that should have never happened. But with these sort of things, uh, with blockchain, we're not going to see those types of things. So again, it'll be completely um, auditable because of the transparency that comes through with it. And also the efficiencies that you'll get will be unbelievable. There's loads of articles out there where, you know, they're talking about how technology within procurement can really save loads of money. And here it's like 24%, which is, you know, a huge saving for a company, you know, and depending on the size, you know, if you're a massive multi-billion dollar company and you can save 24% of your procurement costs, I mean, that is a huge, huge saving that you put on your bottom line and then you become more profitable, more people maybe want to invest in your company, all the rest of it. But I will leave this article um, in the descriptor below so you can go and read this in your own ledger. So how does the MFG token work? Well, that's obviously part of the network here. So you can go on, you can search for, you know, particular partners by capacity, by capability and all these different elements. Then between that, you can then share documents between each other via the blockchain. So obviously that's very secure and obviously you need private keys. Uh, and then you can obviously add, keep adding to the, the blockchain information. And obviously this is going to make everything very secure and streamlined. And eventually you'll probably find someone that can make your product at the right price. You agree on everything. You know, upload all the documents that's required onto the blockchain in terms of a smart contract. Uh, and you can start dealing with these different companies. And the whole platform will be enable you to find these people or manufacturers a lot, lot quicker than potentially you might be able to. And all of it, it will be very transparent. It's on the blockchain. Everyone can see uh, maybe the transactions. They won't be able to see, able to see the detail behind some of this stuff. But that will be easily shared between each party as they go forward. So again, it seems very simplistic in terms of how it's going to work. And really, it's just they're really uplifting their business. They're putting it onto blockchain and they're just missing out the procurement piece uh, where that fat cat would be in the middle. And that's really the, the most simplest way I can describe this. Then they've got their roadmap. So, you know, these guys, they've obviously got the token sale, which is happening at the moment. And then between sort of quarter two and 2019, there's going to be quite a lot going on. However, for me, the real focus is on is the uh, SyncFab 3.0 and this decentralized smart contract platform. That's what I'm waiting for. That's what the big thing's going to be here. And obviously, these guys are the first ones to move within sort of the manufacturing industry, which one is very exciting. And two, it's like, you know, is this going to work? Because if it does, then lots of other people will follow. But these guys will, will sort of set the best in class benchmark. But for me, it's going to be you know a long term hold on this one because we do have about a just under a year for this to come to real fruition. We'll give you the understanding that you require to sort of understand what these guys are trying to do. And yeah, for me, reading the white papers is always essential. You really need to understand what you're investing in and why you're investing in it as well. So these guys have two websites, their syncfab.com, which is their main website as it runs now, and then the blockchain.syncfab.com, which is where you can get involved in the ICO. Now at the moment, uh, there's a 25% bonus. They've got quite a bit of press recently. You know, they are bringing these hardware innovators and hardware manufacturers uh, together on the blockchain. Again, very, uh, very slick website. Most transactions need a middleman who reserves the privileged access to a centralized asset controller. This leads to poor communication, lack of transparency, and limited ins- I mean, it's a great little website. Uh, it's got all the bits and pieces that you need on there. And again, it got some for fairly decent ratings so far. Uh, but we're going to have a look at some of this stuff in more detail. First guy that sticks out for me is Jerry Goodwin. So he's come across incredibly well on all the videos I've seen. Very professional. And also, he, sound, he really does sound like he knows his stuff. And he has a very good record. So obviously he looked on LinkedIn and stuff and, you know, he's been in the industry a long time. So he really does understand what are the issues and how he can fix the problems. Andy Tong, obviously I haven't seen as much from this guy, uh, but very much this quite an entrepreneur. And I think probably need that in terms of driving the business forward. And he seems to be more the, the type marketing guy as well. Then we've got Stephen Sprague. He's from Rivets. Now, that Rivets was a project I invested in early doors at ICO. And again, that's doing incredibly well. It's around about mobile technology. Then you've got Chris Cheng. So when I've been checking out some of the other advisors, you know, he stood out because he's been working on some of the iPhone projects for the last uh, three years or so. So again, he's worked for some big companies on some big projects. And then we've got Peter Morazic. So he's worked for Vibrate. And also JP Morgan, I know what you're thinking, you know, Jamie Dimon, what a moron, we all know that. 
Uh, but you do need these type of strategic guys in the business uh, to, to really help because this is this is quite a complex thing and what they're trying to do. Uh, but they're trying to simplify it. And I think, you know, when you simplify things, that's where you harness uh, efficiencies. And from the diversity of the team that they've pulled together, I think they've got the capabilities to pull this off. So let's talk a little bit about the key metrics. So first of all, they've got a soft cap, which I believe they've just hit. They've also got a hard cap, which is great to see because I don't like to see these companies uh, just get loads of money for money's sake. And we've seen historically things like Tezo and some others that I've already talked about in other videos where they raise all this money and then they just fall flat on their face. So it's not always about how much you raise. But these guys, decent amount of money and obviously a decent amount of money to fund the project. So the total supply tokens will be 1 billion MFGs. And the actual circulating supply to start off with will be quite low because only 30% will be made available through the ICO. So they've had three types of sale, which is one, which is the early adopters, which was in November. They've got the current public sale, which is for the pre-sale. And then they've got the public main sale, which will happen on February 15th. So at the moment, they're going through the pre-sale process. So I got this update just as I was recording this video, where it looks like they've hit their soft cap. So that means actually now where you would have got quite a lot less MFG tokens, you're going to get more MFG tokens for every Ethereum that you spend. So what are the cons that I see with this project? Well, first of all, these are the guys that are first to do it, which is very exciting. But at the same time, they're going to have to be the ones that are going to have to convince the industry that moving to blockchain is the right thing to do. And with some companies, it might be an, an easy sell. And to some other companies, it's going to be, you know, they're going to close the doors and they're interested, whatever it is. It's exciting they're going first, but at the same time, they'll be brunted with all the challenges. Now, the other thing is there's no minimum. So again, this project's starting to get quite a bit of hype and you, we may see the whales just jump in and nick all the tokens. Let's hope not, but that's potentially what could happen. There's also an early 50% bonus. Now, if most people watch my videos, I don't like to see 50% bonuses because it just encourages dumping of the token when it goes live. 20, 25% I think is more than enough to really entice investors in early doors, then move to a standard amount of tokens per ETH. I think they've got a long way to go until they really reach that live product, which is really going to be their Pierre Resistance, which is 3.0. And that's going to be at least a year in the making, as long as there's no holdups and setbacks with this one. But again, it looks like it's going to be a long term hold. So what are the pros that I see with this? So they've got an incredibly detailed white paper. There's a lot of thought, effort and expertise that have gone into this. They have looked like they have a very professional and diverse team to be able to execute this product. They have an existing business already that's working where they'll be able to transition into the blockchain world. Any unsold tokens will be burnt, which is great because obviously we've seen that many times with projects such as Utrust and they burnt the tokens and the price went through the roof. And also US citizens can participate in this ICO. Now we don't see many of these happening, but this is great to see because our friends across the water don't often get the chance to be involved in some of the ICOs. So overall, I've given this project an 8.2 out of 10. I think they've got some big challenges in front of them. I think that they have the experience to do it. Uh, and I've been very impressed with the, the whole company so far. And let's hear from our friends Andy and Lou to see what they think about ICOs. Uh, that one, that one, that one, and I want that one. If you're new to cryptocurrency and you're not too sure where to start, then please check out my course. There's a link at the bottom. There's three and a half hours of great material that will get you up and running really quickly. As always, guys, really appreciate you tuning in. This is just my own personal views. There's no, I'm not financial advisor and it's not financial advice. But you can follow me at jamesball underscore UK on Twitter and Instagram. And you can join my free Facebook group of PT Cryptocurrency Community. Now, if you want a chance to win $5,000, then please head over across to Crypto Rookies uh, and check out what we're offering today. All right, guys, as always, thank you very much. And please like, share the video.